Now let's take a look at a more complicated example. We're going to solve this inequality here, 1 over x minus 5 plus 3 over x plus 3, all greater than 1 half. And what we're looking for are the regions where x will solve the inequality to be true. First thing we need to do is switch out that greater than sign with an equal sign because we want to find our solutions. One, two, however many solutions we have uh, as our first critical values. Next thing we need to do is find ourselves a common denominator. Now we have an x minus 5, we have an x plus 3, and we have a 2 as our denominators. And since none of those are in common, our uh, least common denominator, our least common multiple, is going to be taking each of those and multiplying them all together. So once we multiply these all together, then we're going to multiply through the entire thing by this least common denominator. So that way we can effectively eliminate the fractions and simplify the problem a little bit. So let's go ahead and take the first term, multiply through by all of that, the second term, and then finally the last term. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start canceling things. We have an x minus 5 and an x minus 5 that cancel, an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 that cancel, and a 2 and a 2 that cancel. The rest of it we're going to have to multiply through by. So let's see what this looks like after we clean that up. We have a 1 times an x plus 3 times a 2 plus a 3 times an x minus 5 times a 2 and finally a 1 times an x minus 5 times an x plus 3. Now the first one here, the 1, we can just get rid of that because multiplying by 1 effectively changes nothing. So we really have a 2 times an x and a 2 times a 3. So we're going to have a 2x plus 6 as our first term. Next one here, we have a 3 times a 2 times this group. And, well, I guess the easiest thing to do is to start out doing the 3 times the 2. And that's going to give us 6. So we can get rid of that 3, get rid of that 2, and that way it'll be a little bit easier to distribute. Because now we just need to distribute a 6 times x, and a 6 times negative 5. So that'll give us a plus 6x and a minus 30. So that's all on the left side of the equal sign. On the right side, we have a 1 out front, so that effectively goes away. Um, multiplying by 1 doesn't do much. And then we have an x minus 5 and an x plus 3. For that, we're going to need to FOIL. So if we multiply each of those terms out, we're going to have an x squared at the front. We're going to have a a plus 3x and a minus 5x, which will net us a minus 2x. And then we're going to have a negative 5 times a positive 3, which will be a negative 15 at the end. Now, once we have all of this, it's starting to look very different than where we started, but uh, it's clear that we have a quadratic going on. We have an x squared term, we have some x terms, and we have some constants. And in order to solve a quadratic, the easiest thing to do is get everything on one side so that we can set it equal to zero. So let's do that. If we first clean up our left side, then we can proceed a little better. So we're going to have 2x plus 6x is going to give us 8x. And then we're going to have a 6 minus a 30, and that's going to give us a negative 24 and then we'll leave the other side as is. And now let's move these terms over to the right side, so we're going to subtract an 8x from both sides and add a 24 to both sides, which will clear out the left. And then on the right, we're going to have an x squared. We're going to have negative 8x and negative 2x. It'll be negative 10x. And then negative 15 and positive 24 is going to be a plus 9. 
from here, solving this quadratic, well, we could use quadratic equation, we could complete the square, but the easiest method looks like it's going to be factoring. We're looking for two numbers that factor that multiply to 9. So we have 1 and 9, 3 and 3, uh, and then 9 and 1. And they have to add to a negative 10, so they're both going to have to be negative in order for that to work. And the choice that's going to work here, I guess either of these, so the order doesn't really matter. But we're going to have an x minus 9 and an x minus 1 as our two factors. So x minus 9 and x minus 1 are our two factors. Which means that our solutions are going to be an x equals 9 and an x equals 1. So we have two solutions that are going to work in this problem. The other thing that we have to look for are what are our excluded values. Now our excluded values are way back at the beginning. It's what causes our denominator to go to zero in our original problem. And in this case, it looks like that's going to be a 5 and a negative 3 are going to be excluded values. So 5 and negative 3 will cause our denominator to blow up. And then our two solutions are 1 or 9. These four numbers these four numbers right here are going to be our critical values that we're going to use in the next step to figure out what regions form the solution to the original inequality. So let's go ahead and figure what those are. So again, I have this copied up here. We have 1 and 9 and negative 3 and 5. So what I did is I set up each of those values here. Our 1, 9, negative 3, and 5. right over here, and plotted them on a number line that I have temporarily covered up until we figure out if things work or not. The next thing I did once I had each of these plotted is I found a point that fits nicely in each region. Now something smaller than negative 3, well negative 4 will work. Something between negative 3 and 1, 0 is always a very easy number to work with so I arbitrarily pick 0 between 1 and 5, again you could pick anything, I picked 4, between 5 and 9, I picked 8, and something greater than 9, 10 is a nice easy number, so I picked 10. Now any number that is within these regions will work and will give you the same net result. So if you're working along with me, you do not have to use these exact same values, but if you want to compare your answer to what I'm getting, I would recommend it for now. So let's go ahead and pop these values into the original starting equation, uh, starting inequality. So we have a negative 4, and everywhere we had an x in our original inequality, I'll go back and just take a quick look at it. 1 over x minus 5 plus 3 over x plus 3 is greater than 1 half. That's exactly what we have going on down here. Everywhere we have had an x, we now have a negative 4. If we figure out what this is, we're going to have 1 over negative 9, negative 1, 9. 3 over, this is going to be a negative 1, so negative 3. It's greater than 1 half. And now if I do a little bit of math on this, I can see that that's going to be negative 3 and 1 ninth. And negative 3 and 1 ninth is greater than 1 half? I don't think so. So that is not true. This region of the number line is not going to be shaded. Then we move on to our next region. We have the 0 here. So we plug our 0 into our original inequality, and let's see what happens. 1 over 0 minus 5 is negative 1 fifth. 3 over 3 is going to be 1. And so we're saying that that is greater than 1 half. Now, if you do a quick visual or you simplify this down to 4 fifths is greater than 1 half, we know that that is, in fact, true. And because this is true, because when you plug in 0, this statement is a true statement, we are going to shade this region of the number line. Moving on to 4. Let's go ahead and plug 4 into the original equation, original inequality. 
And when we do that, we're going to have 1 over a negative 1 here. So that'll be negative 1. 3 over 7, 3 sevenths. And again, greater than 1 half. We can simplify this down to get a negative 4 sevenths on one side. And negative 4 sevenths is greater than 1 half. Well, any negative number is clearly not greater than 1 half. So we know that that is, again, not true, which means this region of the graph is not shaded. Next region, from 5 to 9, we picked 8. So we plug that into our starting inequality. We have 1 over a 3, so 1 third, plus a 3 over 11, so 3 elevenths is greater than 1 half. Well, whatever it is, it's going to be pretty close. If we get a common denominator of 33, we will end up having 9 plus 11, which will be 20 30 thirds. So we're saying that 20 30 thirds is greater than 1 half. Again, when I'm doing this fraction step, if you're struggling with this, I would recommend just going to your calculator because the addition of the fractions is not the key component of this. It's making sure that you understand how to identify these critical values and then figure out a test point within each region. So your calculator can simplify that. So we have 20 30 thirds is greater than 1 half. Well, that is, in fact, true. So for this region, we're going to shade it and call it good. Last region, we have the test point 10. So let's plug in that 10 and see what happens. We have a 1 over 5, 1 fifth, plus 3 over 13, greater than 1 fifth. 1 fifth and 3 thirteenths. Well, we're going to end up with 60 fifths as our common denominator. And if you crank through the addition, you're going to end up with 28 over 65 is greater than 1 half. Well, 28 is less than half of 65, so that, again, not a true statement. Not going to shade that region of the graph. Now, just like the other one, you might notice this pattern, this alternating pattern. That's almost always going to be true when you're solving inequalities like this. In fact, I have not seen anything that is particularly different than that unless you have exactly one point it's touching at that point in neither region or both regions are shaded. Otherwise in most standard cases every other one will tend to be shaded so that's how you know you're on the right track. So again if we had to write out what our final answer would look like on this one we're going to say that x is between negative 3 and 1 or x is between 5 and 9. Now, hopefully we won't see anything all that complicated um, in our problems and whatnot, but this gives a good example of what happens when you have critical values and excluded values that are not always going to be zero and will fall in multiple regions like this.